After visiting the store that sells GI tagged products, my interest in IP or intellectual property was triggered. And this curiosity led me to meet Mr. Surendra, an IP expert and the author of The Great Leveler, a book that discusses patent in simple language for everyone to understand. What is intellectual property? So if we go back a bit and think about why do we call it intellectual property? So the name itself suggests it's a property, but it's intellectual in nature, something that originates out of your brain, of your mind, of your creativity. So generally we take this example to explain like since it's a property, it's similar to your uh, real estate property. You have a piece of land or you have a house somewhere. So you want to make sure that it is protected. Nobody encroaches on it. So you put a, a sort of a fence around it uh, so that stop people from entering it. So that's exactly uh, this intellectual property protection. That property is your property that you built, but the fence that you put around it is the protection that you are seeking based on the law of the land. So if it's a technical invention, that fence is a patent that you file to protect it. If it's, a, say, a book, then it's a copyright that you're stopping others from exploiting it. If it's a logo or some name, it's a trademark. So there are various forms of intellectual property. Anything that you create, you can protect it through intellectual property. Like you mentioned, uh, we talked about patents, trademark, copyrights, even domain names, whatever uh, URL that or your, your domain name that you registered, that's an intellectual property. Even uh, there are plant varieties that can be protected as intellectual property. And uh, GI tags that you talked about in one of your previous videos, that geographical indi indication, that's a very interesting and very, very relevant to, uh, to you can say, the, the uh, community who are building those items there. So there are a lot of examples or news that keeps coming in. In the past, we had around Basmati rice, who owns Basmati rice or the tag for Basmati rice. We recently had uh, issue uh, or judgments even around uh, Rasgulla, which state can claim uh, original Rasgulla or even Tirupati laddus, they are uh, a geographical indication. So there are various forms of intellectual property that comes under the broader umbrella of IP. Most commonly that we hear technically are patents that are, that's for technical invention and trademarks and copyrights. But th that's there's a longer list of intellectual property that we have. What is a trade secret? The most famous uh, trade secret is the Coca-Cola uh, formulation. Nobody knows what is the formulation that is used, uh, but it's a trade secret for the Coca-Cola company. And there are a lot of other companies which we would never know what are their trade secrets because it's a trade secret. They don't want anybody to know about it. So they dis internally, they define a trade secret policy and assign trade secret back to that those particular ideas and things that are uh, saved internally. And various countries have some trade secret laws. So otherwise, once a trade secret is leaked, everybody knows that you can't do anything about it. But there are countries and even India is uh, thinking about having a trade secret law where you can follow particular procedures to define a tra trade secret and how uh, hopefully it never gets leaked, but if it does, then still you can get some protection out of it. When did this uh, concept originate or how did it originate? This whole idea of protecting uh, innovation and IP um, has been around for a long time. A few years back, uh, uh, one millionth US patent was awarded. So that means uh, it's been there for a long time. And I remember definitely more than 100 years, maybe 150 years or so, we'll have to cross check that that uh, we know there are patents uh, of, of that time. So it's been around for very long. Uh, and the whole idea is about giving protection to somebody who comes up with a new idea. In the book, if you've read, we've talked about the scarecrow example. Tell us about your journey so far. Within the field of IP, as uh, we were discussing earlier, that I got into this field by accident, by chance. I was supposed to get into a software uh, field software company, but then because of 9-11 happening that time, it got delayed and in between I got an opportunity to work in a startup which was focusing on intellectual property. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started getting interested in it. It was a very new field, very different, made a lot of sense to me personally. I like looking at different ideas, talking to inventors. I myself also wanted to become an inventor, but that, that, that really connected with me and I stayed along. I left that company after two years and started a company of my own where we are doing similar IP services for 
international law firms com- clients as well as domestic clients so somehow that company couldn't take off we worked on it for 2 3 years but because of personal issues and financial issues i had to close it down but it was a great learning experience uh, then i had to got into a, get into a more settled job so i started looking and then again i got an opportunity to work in a uh, well established mnc who was starting their ip services that time in bangalore so i moved from uh, noida to bangalore how has the ip landscape changed over time the whole ip landscape globally has also changed there's a lot of awareness that has come up when we started most of even when we used to go to talk to uh, some ceos ctos they didn't know the difference between about pat they didn't know much about patents or they didn't know the difference about a patent and trademark now there is much more awareness still there is lack of awareness but much higher than it was there senior leader cxos are more interested in ip want to make sure that they can leverage ip they don't want their ip to be lost they want to get that uh, strategic commercial uh, benefit out of the ip that uh, their company their employees are creating so there is much more receptiveness around the ip if i file for ip in india is it valid outside india ip is always territorially protected in a particular jurisdiction if i am in india i want to file a patent in india i can go to the indian patent office and file but if it is granted i get protection only in india if i want this to commercialize the same idea same invention in different countries in the us in japan china singapore canada europe different countries i'll have to go there individually and file patent so which is a costly affair and would also take time what would be an ip strategy we need to find out what is the value commercial value that you can extract out of the idea you have so for example if you come up with some new idea i'm just hypothetically saying out of um, my current uh, thoughts that if you come up with an idea that we have all use uh, cell phones but we have to charge them every day if somebody come up with an idea that there is a small uh, sticker that you put on your phone and it's uh, some super powered battery and you'll never have to charge it again and that's a huge value you have to technically prove that it works it should not be again uh, hypothetical but if somebody comes up with that idea it's a huge value and then you'll have to think about how do you create your ip strategy around it who can use it everybody can lot of companies can use it if you come up with this idea you can file like you were discussing either a very quick provisional that gives you one year to decide and talk to some partners and get more money around it and then you can file a full specification and you have a, a one year time to file in other countries and there's also a concept of this pct filing where you can file a pct application which gives you more time up to 24 to 30 months to decide which other countries you want to file so that should be a part of your ip strategy how and where which countries you file how do you plan that process timing and everything the other as i said is the commercial part of it who do you talk to you have a patent you have to go out and pitch about that that it becomes like a clear business pitch you have a patent that's your protection but what is the value of that idea that patent where can it be implemented who are the target users for it commercially um, the companies the end users how much value does it uh, can it create so that's the commercial part of it that you have to decide as you uh, so ip strategy would be a function of that so if you say that this is of great value for for some reason in thailand then you have to see that can you create can you have some protection in thailand specifically or in other part, wherever you think uh, there could be there is commercial benefit for that particular idea what is the role of an ip expert and what is the role of a legal team where a, a patent or any of the intellectual property is concerned the ip professional would have this broad techno and legal experience either through experience or through education they'll have that exposure and handle both of them so there is no there is a legal team which may be involved in some cases but it's mostly the ip team under the broader legal organization how do uh, if uh, an individual see companies know how to get an ip professional if an individual wants to get an ip professional is there a nationally recognized body or a website from where they can kind of approach so there are a lot of forums available that are there that are focused on the aim of uh, creating more awareness providing services to smaller inventors entrepreneurs so y- if you search for it i can also share some links that you can add i don't have uh, immediately right now but there are multiple groups that are available in india globally in the us also that are providing these services providing support to individual in- individual inventors to identify the 
patentability of their idea and then also file patents on it. Otherwise, if you generally search for IP law firms, IP lawyers, you will get a long list or you can check in, our, in your network and find out, you can ping us, I can refer some. And then you can, and many of those are happy to provide, as I said earlier, at a lower cost or pro bono services to these inventors uh, to help them uh, file patents on their ideas. But how do you know uh, it is the authentic, like, you know, because a lot of people might just claim to be this. So for that, is there any uh, body that recognizes or? Mm, that's a good point. I am not aware if there's a body that recognizes, but ideally any lawyer who is uh, or a patent agent is allowed to file patents on behalf or individual inventors can also go and directly file for themselves so it will like you do a regular reference check you can do a reference check and you can check if they are reliable that's a reliable firm or not before you go ahead with them young person nowadays there are so many uh, career options that are available so they want to become an ip um, expert or an uh, go or work in the field of ip how can they go about it yeah, so as I mentioned, I got into it by chance, by accident. But now over the last two decades, this has become a very active field. Uh, a lot of new people are coming into it, especially engineering graduates who want to get into this. This is a good option for them to explore. They are very well-defined, uh, renowned courses. Uh, some of the IITs also providing IP law uh, courses that people can explore. Other legal institutes are obviously their law firms, uh, law Colleges are there who are providing IP specialization. So as I mentioned, it's a techno legal field, I would say. Either you have a technical degree and you get and learn a bit of a legal part of it formally or through work, or you have a legal degree and then try to understand a bit of the technical domain of it and then get into it. But uh, both are possible. So, uh, and there are various types of uh, jobs or roles that you can get into. You can get into a law firm, which is a very core legal work. You can try to understand the legal aspects of it. You can go to hearings. You can go into court proceedings. The, the core legal uh, career path can be developed there. Then there are very uh, focused services organization that I would say more around the consulting part of it. You're providing services to corporates. You work there. You're even providing them consulting on what should be your IP strategy. Where should you be filing competitive intelligence? What are your competitors doing? So that's an interesting piece. And then there could be more, uh, you can say, in-house companies uh, where they have IP teams that's very focused to a particular company's domain. So if you are in a chemical company, a part of the IP team, then you should know everything about that company. What is that company's uh, target or objectives or market focus and create IP strategy aligning with their, with that company and that industry. So all these options are there. Uh, if younger folks are coming in, they should get some experience, get some exposure and then decide which direction they want to go into. I'm new to the field of patents. I have read your book and I really enjoyed it. Could you share a little bit about your book to the viewers? Thanks a lot for reading the book. And uh, this book or this thought had been in mind for a long time because whenever we used to talk to anywhere in the company or with my friends, when I talked to senior leaders, we always felt they did not understand IP the way we want them to understand. So they see it as a secondary thing. So how do we make it? make them understand in an easy way and we used to do a lot of uh, sessions awareness activities so and then uh, uh, lockdown hit in 2020 when we were there sitting at home uh, had some time even after washing utensils and doing all the homework because we didn't have to travel so saved some time there so i thought let me start writing uh, let me try to start writing so it's not like a big masterpiece literary master of it it's just a simple articles i used to write every weekend and collated it over a couple of months and uh, the idea here is to explain in the form of a story uh, to anybody who is reading it to a fresher or to somebody new to ip or even those who are into the ip domain or senior leaders that why ip is important uh, as i was talking that it always have to first you have to understand the concept and philosophy what is the protection that you are getting and secondly why is it important how do you use it first how do you get it and second how do you use it and if you don't have it how can you get into some trouble because others would have it and they can stop you from doing it so that's the uh, idea that we are trying to bring out through this small story in a fictional way with the help of the characters that we have built 
So that that was the whole uh, thought behind writing the book. And since we are doing this, it will be great if uh, we can encourage people to read this book. We can also create a discount code that we can add uh, in the links and comments where people can go and buy and use that discount code. Thank you so much. It was wonderful talking to you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very glad to be here. And I hope there are many more such episodes that come up in future. And I'll also look forward to see and hear those episodes. Thank yeah. you so much. Do like, subscribe and share the Through Y Lifestyle. Continue to be amazing.